Rec hunters Mike Barnett and Jimmy Godomsky have set their sights on a large sonar target that is so deep, no one has ever successfully identified it. It is known simply as the 380 wreck. All we really know about the 380 wreck is the depth, hence the name 380, because it's about 380 feet of water to the bottom. The wreck sits 13 miles off the Florida Keys, just inside the Bermuda Triangle. But what has caught Mike and Jimmy's attention is the fact that the 380 wreck falls along the route of a century-old Bermuda Triangle mystery. The SS Sue Duffco. It was a 324-foot steamer that had absolutely no reason to disappear, at least no logical reason. The Sudefco was built in 1920 as a cargo steamship, just after World War I, and its main route was from the East Coast through the Panama Canal to the West Coast, and went back and forth carrying supplies. March 13, 1926, Sudefco departs Newark, New Jersey, en route to the West Coast. Her cargo holds are filled with steel construction pipes bound for the growing cities of San Francisco and Los Angeles. The next day, Sudufko and her crew of 29 men approach the Bermuda Triangle and radio in their position. All is well, and then, nothing. The divers use motorized scooters to expedite their dive to the wreck. 380 feet down, she's waiting for them. At long last, they've confirmed the target known as the 380 wreck is indeed a shipwreck. This is the first time human eyes have seen this vessel since the day it vanished. The wreck has a single screw for propulsion, just like Sudovko. And the size of the propeller could be a match. Obviously, you're diving any wreck. It doesn't matter if it's 100 feet of water or 400 feet of water. The process to identify that wreck is the same. The difference being at 400 feet, your time is much more limited. It's a race against the clock. It's super exciting to be the first person on a wreck. Nobody had been on this wreck since it sank. Strangely, the wreck is in good condition far better than a nearly century-old wreck should be. And then, Barnett spots something truly bizarre. So we're looking at the hull, we're seeing all these holes. About the size of two hands, just boom, 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 all over the hull. The holes do not appear to be natural formations. Something made them. Could they be signs of gunfire? We're seeing it high on the hull. We're seeing it below the water line. It's almost as if this vessel was attacked. The ship's wheelhouse has also been obliterated. Only a burnt out shell remains. The rest of it was still all intact. It was only the wheelhouse that was burnt, which was super strange. <laughs> Something isn't adding up on this wreck. We definitely had a mystery at hand here. <laughs> the dive clock hits zero. <laughs> the team now has more questions than answers. Looking for alternate candidates, Jimmy meets up with shipwreck historian Chuck Mead an expert on shipwrecks in and around the Bermuda Triangle. Pulling old files from his database, Chuck spots a footnote about a case not from the 1920s, but the 1990s. OK, look at this one. Motor vessel, Gino Express. 20 miles southeast of Long Key. Yeah, that's, that's pretty close. That's yeah. pretty close. November 1994, with Tropical Storm Gordon bearing down on the Florida coast, the Geno Express, a cargo freighter on its way home, is disabled and taking on water. 
and sees 15 to 20 feet in rain squalls. The Coast Guard sends a rescue helicopter, but the report makes no mention of the bizarrely focused damage to the wheelhouse and hull. Not too much more information here. Why I question this is because yeah. the wheelhouse looks like we had a big fire there, and then we still have these holes all down the side. So there's definitely some mysteries still. Nailing down this wreck's identity may come down to the presence or lack of cargo. I think uh, she's worthy of another dive on. This is a ship that's in the right place, maybe the right time from what the hole looks like. You know, not too much marine growth. 1994 makes sense. Right size. If you get down to that cargo hold and there's nothing there, that's one more tick in the box. With another suspect in the Geno Express, the team heads to the 380 wreck for one more dive. They still need a definitive clue to identify this ship, which means searching every inch of this wreck. One crucial detail, the cargo holds. The Sudafco was carrying steel pipes, but their new suspect, the Geno Express, was empty when it disappeared. With no definitive clues visible from outside, Jimmy decides to take on a much riskier maneuver, a penetration dive deeper into the ship. <laughs> Gadomsky finds a lone prop pushed up against the wall. Apart from that, nothing. It becomes very apparent very quickly that there's no cargo on the inside of this wreck. It's just completely empty. With no sign of the steel materials Sudovko was carrying, the identity of this wreck is finally becoming clear. But to definitely link this wreck to the Geno Express, the team needs to unlock one last mystery the bizarre holes and destroyed wheelhouse. So Mike and Jimmy track down one of the few eyewitnesses to the ship's final hours. How's it going, Steve? Hey, guys. How's it going? Thank you for coming. Great to meet Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Former Coast Guard search and rescue pilot, Stephen Newark. It was, I think, November 14th, 1994. I was a young Coast Guard helicopter pilot. We got called out in a tropical storm, uh, Gordon, to rescue the motor vessel Geno Express crew. Seas were 20 feet and in some waves bigger. The wind speed on the surface was uh, in excess of 50 knots. It was the worst weather that I had seen as a Coast Guard pilot. Steve and his crew successfully rescued all nine sailors on board the Geno. But none of that explains the location discrepancy, much less the strange damage to the wreck. And at first, we weren't really sure what caused her sinking, because she was pretty intact. Uh, but as we started moving around the wreck, we started seeing holes on the side of the hull. <laughs> I look like, like attack damage. Do you know yeah. the, what happened to subsequent events after you guys departed the scene? Funny you should ask. So we left, and then they sent a 210-foot Coast Guard cutter, decisive. They arrived on scene, but it was drifting toward, you know, the beautiful mm -hmm. coral reefs off of the Keys. Though the Geno's cargo holds were empty, she still carried hundreds of gallons of diesel fuel, forcing the Coast Guard to make an unusual decision. It could become an environmental hazard to the coral reef there off Florida. So they ended up circling the ship and shooting it with their 25 millimeter automatic cannon, their big gun on the bow. They just started peppering the vessel for 360 degrees around below the waterline. And Chris, it would have been listing and sus. That kind of explains why a lot of the holes are in different locations at different levels. White hot tracer rounds also set fire to the wheelhouse. And they, I think they, they sank it with about 110 rounds. So that's where that came from. 
It's the last piece of the puzzle. The mystery is solved. The wreck they discovered is the Geno Express. To learn the final moments of this vessel and what happened to the crew, that it's just, it's, we can't thank you enough. It's just been awesome.